One of the things that we should be doing as photographers every single quarter is registering our images with the U.S. Copyright Office. I do this either towards the end of the quarter or the beginning of every quarter, literally every single quarter of the year. And the reason I do this and the reason you should be doing this is because having your photos actually registered with the U.S. Copyright Office is the difference between receiving actual damages, meaning whatever you would have charged to license that photos to an entity to use them versus any other damages that may have been incurred, um, lost revenue, et cetera, up to $150,000 per infringement. Now, the chances of you actually receiving $150,000 are pretty slim, but my point is it's literally the difference between a couple hundred dollars in some cases to several thousand dollars, tens of thousands of dollars potentially. I first learned how to register my photos through the actual U.S. Copyright Office website. There's some good uh, video tutorials on there to show you how to do that. Also, another photographer, Gary Gomez, had made a nice video several years ago, and I've kind of been using his approach, um, like just some of the different naming conventions he did. So go, I'll link his video down in the description, but you can go watch that if you'd like. But I wanted to make my own video to show my personal workflow from start to finish. And there's also chapter markers down below if you want to skip ahead and kind of just get to the point. Because as you know, if you've watched my videos, I do tend to ramble. That said, the process is very simple, but there's a lot of steps. And um, I, once you do it a few times, it becomes faster. I should be able to do this in less than 20 minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. First and foremost, I would argue that the most important and most complicated step of the copyright process is actually getting your files organized. And if you can build this into your workflow, it's a lot easier. For example, this is my Lightroom folder structure. I have one catalog for every single year for every single thing that I do. I have main folders based on the genre of photography I'm doing, architecture and design, other, this is kind of a miscellaneous bucket, real estate, and any time-lapse photography I've been doing. Now, when I work, every single photo that I deliver to a client is considered published. Uh, whether they use it or not, it is still published. You have exported it out of your editing program. You have published it to a site, whether it's Dropbox or wherever else for delivery. Those are considered published photos. And today we're just talking about registering published photos. You can also register unpublished photos, but I'm not going to get into all the little technical details. We're just talking about the process today. All right. So within my architecture and design folder, for example, I have everything broken up into quarters. And so this makes it very easy. And also every image that I deliver is marked as flagged. So as you can see, if I have delivered this image, it is a flagged photo. So I know automatically every photo in this collection that has a flag on it is going to be a photo that was delivered. Now there are instances where I have the same image flagged twice and it looks to be like the same type of Im like the same image basically but there's minor variations so for example this one i superimposed the screen onto the photo i did deliver both of these iterations to the client so i want to register both of these photos even though they're technically the same photo any minor changes that you make to a photo that you deliver you're going to want to register those for example i have one case where uh, it literally came up in the deposition that there was uh, a slight crop on the photo that was actually used on the website or the one that I delivered versus the one that was used on the website. So you're going to want to make sure that all of those details are covered. Any changes that you make to the photos, make sure you register all versions of those changes. Okay. So that said, once you have everything selected, it's very easy to find which photos you need to export because in my case, I flag everything that I delivered. So I know that right now, I have 86 photos uh, that I have published this year, or this quarter rather, in quarter four of 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and export every single one of those, okay? Now, I have two presets made, one for copyright registration and one for Pixie. Pixie we'll talk about later as a bonus tip. Uh, copyright registration, I pretty much have all of my things set up here. I just, all I have to do really here is change the naming convention to quarter four versus quarter three because that was the last time I used it. My naming convention for the actual files, I have a custom thing set up, and here's what it looks like. It's date, the year, 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 month, month, date, date, uh, day, day, rather, and hour and minute. And the reason I do hour and minute is because it, it kind of puts all of the photos in order, which is very nice, and it's very easy to find these. I'll also show you later on where this naming convention really comes in handy, especially when it comes, in, comes, with, comes to Pixie. 
All right, so all of the photos that I export have this naming convention. In fact, when I deliver the photos to the, fo the these photos to my clients now, the last year and a half, I've been delivering the photos with the same na naming convention. They can name it whatever they want to after the fact, but I deliver them with this naming convention so that on my end, it's at least covered. I use Pixie Set to deliver all my photos as of right now, and I can easily prove that you know th that was the title of the photo that I sent. My other photos, I keep the quality down to 60, the long edge 450, and resolution 75. Now, I remove all this information because none of that is relevant. All you need is basically a small thumbnail to represent the image that you have registered with the image with the U.S. Copyright Office. You don't need a massive file. In fact, I'll show you what they look like after we export. So I have already exported these because it's something that I do throughout the year, and I haven't done any new shoots the, in the last couple weeks. But once you do, you hit export. Uh, we've already done all that. And then, again, I have these other fo folders over here as well. So I have an other folder. Did I do anything in this quarter? I did not. Uh, have I done any real estate shoots this quarter? I have. So we're going to make sure all these are exported as well. Again, everything that has a flag has been delivered or published. So I'm going to go ahead and export those as well. And what ends up happening is I end up having a folder for myself uh, in Dropbox labeled quarter four, 2022. And you can see all my other, my previous registrations as well. Okay. So once we look in here, you can see all of my photos are listed and this is what the quality looks like. It's very low quality. It does not have to be high quality, just FYI. And you're also going to want to keep them small because you're going to be uploading every single one of these images to the U S copyright office's website. Now, the next step is you're going to want to fill out an Excel spreadsheet that the U.S. Copyright Office, Office provides to you. I'm going to show you where to find that. So when you go to the Copyright Office website, uh, you're going to go down to Register Your Works, hit Learn More. And then when we go to actually register them, you're going to click on this button. But if this is your first time doing this, you're going to want to scroll down to the types of works that you're going to be published. Hit Learn More under ph Photographs or whatever you're registering. And you don't want to hit register a photograph. You want the title list template for published photographs. And that's what we're going to be using today. So if you just click on that, it should download an Excel, um, an Excel spreadsheet. I've already been using this. Again, I've been using Gary Gomez's naming convention because it works really well and I, I prefer it. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to close this up here. And we're going to go ahead and get started there. Now, this is the second step. What I typically do, because it's just easier this way, I go into my previous folder quarter three, and I look for the Excel spreadsheet that I did in quarter three. I'm just simply going to copy this and paste it into my quarter four 2022 folder. We're going to go ahead and expand this really quick. And as you can see, the file has a very specific naming convention. Group registration photos by Jordan Powers published July 1st, 2022 to September 15th, 2022. 292 photos, Okay. We're basically going to do that same exact thing here. So I'm going to select all the photos that I have, and we have a total of 456 photos that we're going to be registering with the U.S. Copyright Office in this batch. So 456 photos. We're going to go ahead and start by renaming this to 456. Oops. Okay, so we've got 456 photos there. And then we need the dates. So we've got the first date was... October 14th. So we're going to rename this here. And then the last one was December 7th. Okay, so group registration photos by Jordan Powers published October 14th, 2022 to December 7th, 2022. I haven't published or delivered any photos since then, okay? So 456 total photos. It's pretty... Hard to argue what exactly I'm submitting in this document. Okay, so once you have it renamed, um, you're going to go ahead and open it up. And this is what the document looks like, okay? You're going to see this case number up here. We'll get to that in just a second. But this is where all of your photos are listed up here, okay? So we're going to go ahead and clear out all the data that we entered, which is these first four columns here, because we don't need them, all right? What we're going to do is we're going to go back to the folder and you're literally going to select all of the photos on, make sure you don't have the group registration photo selected and you're just going to hit command C to copy and you're literally just going to click on the first cell right here required title photograph and you're going to paste them right there 
and it's going to fill in all of those for you, right? Now you're also going to do, want to do the same thing in the second column. And then this third column here, what you want to do is do the month and year of publication. So for example, this was 10 of 22. Whoops. This one is 10 of 22. And you just do a few of these. And then you can drag, you can click on those cells and you can drag this down through the rest of October. Okay, there we go. And then we go to uh, November, 11, 22, Now, the reason we have to use this particular form, one, we have to include this form with our submission, but two, we're going to use this same column over, this green column over here. You can see it added a comma after every, f after every file name, so we'll get to that later. Now, as far as this case number is concerned, we're going to have to get a new case number. And the way you do that is you go to the U.S. Copyright Office website, and we need to go ahead and get start registering our photos. So we're going to go ahead and log in to their system here. It says to use Firefox, but I've, I've just used Chrome, and it's worked fine for me. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that it, the, the, the office seems to be resetting our passwords every quarter now, which is kind of annoying. So it seems that I have to go in and change my password every single quarter, which is kind of frustrating. But just keep that in mind for future reference. So once you log in, it's a government website. It's very antiquated, and it's kind of hard to look at, all right? So just follow along with these prompts. I'm going to move through this pretty quickly. You can pause if you need to, but I'm not really going to explain everything that I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of time lapse through this because it's just a very kind of long and tedious and boring process, okay? Now you can explore all these other options on your own time, but right now the only thing we're focused on is showing you how to register your photos, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to do the register a group of photographs. Once you're in there, go ahead and hit start registration, and you're gonna see a case number is created. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this case number, and we're gonna go back to our Excel document. And by the way, you do want to use Excel. I tried using numbers before, and it doesn't create this column for you. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a, a pain but so I use Excel for this now we've got our case number we're gonna go ahead and, and save this document so we've got our case number we're gonna go to published photographs here just hit I agree you can read the terms on your own and hit continue now here we need to do new now this is the kind of complicated part that you really need to pay attention and make sure you're doing the right way all right you're gonna hit new the title of the group. Now this is going to be whatever you named your file here. We're going to copy that. We're going to paste it in here. The number of photos in the group, 456. The year of completion, 2022. Earliest publication date. We're going to, it's October, what was it? October 14th. Let's see, 10, 14, 2022. And 12, 7, 2022. The nation of first publication, obviously United States. And we go ahead and save that. Okay, so we've got step one started. The next step, you have to hit new again. Now in this section, you have to register each month individually, okay? Now the way we do this is we go back to our Excel document. And this is where this column really comes in handy, okay? We're going to want to select all the photos that were in October, we're gonna copy all of the file, this entire column here in the green through October, and we're gonna paste that into here. Now, there is a 1,995 character limit, so sometimes if you've got way too many photos published, you may need to break this up into sections, which is kind of tedious, but it is what it is. According to Excel, we have 287 selections made, images made for October, and it was published in October. Go ahead and save that. And then we have to do the same exact thing for November and December. And I'm going to go ahead and time lapse through this. So once you have everything entered in this section, you're going to go ahead, going to, you're going to go ahead and hit continue. And this is where the, these screens are very annoying. So I'm also going to time lapse through these. But essentially, you're just filling out your information. I will pause if there's anything noteworthy that I need to tell you. Otherwise just fill out this information.
Now, this special handling section, if you don't need any kind of special handling for any of this, you can just skip past this section. And then here we need to add our file name again. Hit continue. You can go through and you can confirm everything if you'd like to, but if you've done this a few times, you know it's all accurate. You can go ahead and hit add to cart. And then you can hit checkout. And then you do have to pay before you upload your files, which is kind of annoying, but the whole process is kind of annoying. So you just kind of learn to live with it. All right, once your payment has been successful, you can go ahead and hit continue. And then this is where you do your upload, okay? So we're gonna go back to this first and you do want to go ahead and compress all of these files into a zip file. And then what I do is I just copy this naming convention and I rename the zip file that as well because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and select the file, the Excel file and the zip file. We'll hit open and then we can hit start upload and it will start uploading for us. And this is also the reason why you wanna have those really small files because it uploads very quickly and you don't need high resolution photos for this. It's just not necessary. Now, once everything is uploaded, you click on this green button and you are all set. Your photos are now officially submitted for registration for the US Copyright Office. This process does take a few months, but uh, they do pro or retroactively make it in effect the day you submitted it. So everything is officially registered with the U.S. Copyright Office, effective December 31st, assuming I didn't make any errors or anything like that, okay? Now, that's the process for registering with the U.S. Copyright Office. The next thing I do is I upload all of these photos to Pixie. Now, this video is not an ad for Pixie by any means, but Pixie is a service that I use, and what Pixie does is it monitors usage for your images across the internet. All right, so I'm not gonna make this a Pixie tutorial, but I'll show you quickly what it looks like. So when you log into your dashboard, I see that I have 90 unseen matches, meaning photos that have been used across the internet of my images. They may or may not be authorized to use them, so I can go through and investigate every single one of these. There's 87, there's a lot of images to go through, so I'm not gonna do that right now. I'll do that later. But what I do is after every submission, I upload all of those photos to Pixie. And this is also where that file naming convention comes in handy because Pixie orders these, or at least you can, you can adjust the order, but one of the ways you can adjust it is by file name. So I know that the last photo uh, date that was submitted was from uh, September 15th of this year. So I can go ahead and import through Dropbox if I want. I can upload from the computer. We're just going to do that. And I'm going to go to my Pixie folder because the Pixies, now the Pixie files, I have at a slightly higher resolution because I do want to make sure that that detail, so these are obviously larger photos compared to the copyright. That's why I export the Pixie photos separate. So we're just going to literally upload every single one of these. There's 456 files. And once it's uploaded, you will see all of the photos in Pixie. Okay, now it's gonna take a while for you know all of these to filter through the internet and um, get picked up, but they're in there, they're good to go. You can set it and forget it. I personally do not use any of Pixie's other services. I don't submit um, any copyright takedowns or requests for them to get licensing. I'm not gonna get into the reason as to why, but I just don't. I use an IP attorney for things like that. If I see an actual infringement that I think is worthy of pursuing, I will submit it to an attorney. If it's like a local company infringing on it, I will probably try and reach out to them first and come up with some kind of resolution. I would rather try and get the business than have any kind of litigation or anything like that. I want to be easy to work with, but if people are blatantly stealing it and they're being uncooperative, having your photos registered with the U.S. Copyright Office gives you leverage that you wouldn't have had otherwise. If we can get more photographers to start doing this across the industry, whether you think you're a professional or an amateur or not. It's only $55, and you can do up to 750 images. And you can, if you do this every single quarter, your images will be protected. And again, this is the difference between getting a couple hundred dollars or maybe a thousand dollars or so to getting tens of thousands of dollars potentially. So keep this in mind. I hope you found this video valuable. Please let me know if you have any specific questions regarding anything I covered in this 
Otherwise, I'm going to encourage you to do your own research. I also linked below to Gary Gomez's video on registering your copyright photos, but I thought maybe some of you would resonate with my process for one reason or another. And this is like the third or fourth video I've made on this, but I never liked them and I would end up taking them down. But I think now I'm going to keep this one on because it's important that uh, people start registering their images. So hopefully you found this helpful. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.